Hey all and welcome to Engenomics, I'm Hank. And today I wanted to go over kind of this topic that's near and dear to my heart. And that's the topic of personal finance right in your 20s, right after college. Let's just say that I've been extremely disappointed with the way that school, especially college, has handled personal finance. And I don't think that a lot of students are getting the proper ideas that they need about what they should do immediately after they graduate and immediately after they get their first job. And that's completely understandable. I mean, for the first time in your life, you don't have a you don't have a track to go off of. You don't have a parent telling you where to go and what to do. And you don't have a teacher giving you deadlines on homework day in and day out. Here's some quick background on my life for those unfamiliar. Uh, this spring, I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree from the University of Michigan, which should have been a pretty exciting time, except for due to be it being 2020, um, it was all online and all virtual. Um, in addition, my job, which would have started in July, was also pushed back to being completely virtual. So here I am making this YouTube video in my parents' basement, which you may think is a little hypocritical given the fact that this is based on finance that you should follow and advice that you should follow in your 20s. The silver lining here is that I've actually had a lot of time to sit and reflect and research about things that I should be doing in my early 20s to maximize my efforts and my finances. Um, and I kind of wanted to make this video so I could share this with you guys. Without further ado, let's jump into what you can do right now in your early 20s to maximize your finances. Step one is just get a job. Now you don't have to worry about applications, cover letters, resumes, and interviews. Now you can just focus on the job that you have ahead of you and the paychecks that you get. When you get your first paycheck, just go out and enjoy it. You've earned it. You've been working hard for presumably four years to get your degree. So just go out and have fun for a little bit. Step two I have is benchmark, benchmark, benchmark. Without knowing where you are, you're not gonna be able to improve in the future. So benchmarking is, in my opinion, the most important step. So I want you to, once you're done enjoying your first paycheck, of course, I want you to go into Excel. Uh, there's also other budgeting apps for this. So you can use, uh, you need a budget, every dollar, mint. Those are all great options. But I want you to go into that and I want you to do the following. First, I want you to track every paycheck that you have. And with that, I want you to have every expense that you have. I have this on a monthly basis. So for the month of, say, November, which this video is made in, um, I would have my paychecks in one, one section, and then I would have every expense that I had. This would include things like rent, groceries, going out, transportation, utilities, and fun. That's like the most helpful thing because that establishes what I would call a cash flow. So for cash flow, think of your bank account as a reservoir. When it rains, your income, you're putting money into that reservoir and it fills up. And when you spend money, that water level goes down. So you want to kind of get a baseline for how much you can expect for that water level to fluctuate. And that's why I would advise doing this for probably about two months. Step three is to categorize and strategize. Once you've been doing this for about two months, you probably have a good idea about where your expenses are going. Um, that said, it's beneficial to put them into concrete categories. This I would kind of put between the two umbrellas of discretionary and non-discretionary. Non-discretionary expenses are expenses that you need to pay no matter what, not to discretion, non-discretionary. So this would include things like rent, uh, electricity, water, all utilities, um, gas for your car when you're commuting probably, and probably groceries as well. So discretionary is the opposite of non-discretionary. While non-discretionary is your needs, discretionary is your wants. This would be things like restaurants and entertainment. So after categorizing and strategizing, take a look. Like, where are you spending the most money? Are you dying a death of a thousand cuts from every streaming service on the entire planet? Or are you just spending hundreds of dollars on clothing each week? Take a look at this and really kind of take a deep dive and a look in the mirror at where you're spending your money. Step four is setting goals. Setting goals can be really great because it kind of gives you a glimmer into the future about where you're gonna be in a couple years, but it can also be a little bit scary. So say like one of your goals is paying off your student debt. That probably has to happen sooner rather than later. Um, on the other hand, um, a fun goal such as like a new car, um, that can bring you a lot of joy. So uh, setting goals is a really important step. And once you kind of have a budget, you're probably more able to quantify those goals. These financial goals should also be SMART goals, meaning they should be strategic, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time bound. I will save X amount of money in Y amount of time. Not, 
I will probably have this much money by the time that I'm retired, hopefully. The beauty about being in your 20s is that you have this ability to jumpstart on your financial goals. As Mark Cuban puts it, it's living like a student. This means you're probably not acclimated to, um, you know, the real world. And your idea of a good time is probably going out and getting dollar well drinks at your favorite bar and getting a $5 pizza afterwards. That's a six to, depending on how much fun you like to have, $20 a night. And that's not that much, really. So what are your financial goals? Are they to uh, buy a car, pay off your student debts, make a million dollars? Um, it's up to you, kind of. Um, but here's a good start. Money guru Dave Ramsey recommends that you have $1,000 in your emergency fund. That means that if anything went wrong, you kind of have the ability to uh, just pay that out of pocket and don't worry about it. This kind of leads me into step five, which is to invest. So come in here for a second. I'm not a licensed CPA, and this is solely based off of my own experience, but as you'll probably see in the rest of the video, I have a lot of good sources to back this up. So stay tuned. So a Gallup poll in April of 2020 determined that around 55% of Americans are currently invested in the stock market. This is down from uh, 2002, where that number was actually 67%. So it's down almost over 10%, which is pretty concerning. Um, but what happened? Uh, did everyone in 2002 suddenly pull out their stocks and buy Nickelback CDs and GameCubes? Uh, no, actually, it, it, it hovered around this level for um, all the way until 2008 when the stock market crashed. But at that point, Americans kind of lost faith in the system, so they kind of pulled out of the stock market, which is really concerning, and it's a real shame because the the, the stock market, it has the potential to uh, change your finances for the better. So the biggest problem with the stock market and Americans is they kind of view it as this this gambling, this this lottery, when in actuality it really isn't. Uh, it's pretty calculated, and I'll, I'll show you. So if you pick any 20-year period of the S&P 500, uh, the S&P 500, for those unfamiliar, are the top 500 stocks valued in the United States. It has always increased over a 20-year period. On average, for the past 90 years, the S&P 500 has grown an average of 9.8% annually. And if you look at the catastrophic events like the Great Depression, the Great Recession, and even the 2020 pandemic, they look like small dips and otherwise incline. So which stock should... which... Which stocks should? Which stocks should? So which stock should you invest in? That leads me to point six. So step six is patience and not choice. The beauty about being in your 20s is you're kind of able to have time on your side. And through the power of compound interest, every dollar that you invest in your 20s, you're able to turn that into around 80 to $100 by the time of retirement. And that's pretty crazy when you think about it. That said, the best strategy for investing is just to set it and forget it. Don't get kind of caught up in these uh, the everyday um, ups and downs of the stock market. If you keep it in your investment for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, you're, you're gonna you're gonna see gains and you're gonna see uh, your stocks grow. Uh, this is kind of outlined in John Vogel's book, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. I'll also leave a link for that in the description. In this book, John Vogel kind of outlines his just crazy tool that he calls the index fund. An index fund is a group of a bunch of different parts of different stocks, and this allows you to um, diversify your investments. Uh, for example, if you buy an S&P 500 index fund, this has bits of every single of the top United States 500 stocks. Um, that way, instead of trying to pick the winning calf, you're just buying the whole farm, and it just it makes investing super easy, and you should definitely check this out and read it. So to summarize, the stock market might be kind of daunting for the average person who's just starting out, but with a little bit of research, you can turn it into a powerful tool to exponentially grow your paychecks. The theoretical physicist Albert Einstein even went on record saying that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. If you're not convinced yet, think about waiting until your 30s to invest. If you start at age 30 investing $2,000 annually at 9.8%, which is the average S&P 500 annual return, you will end up at the age of 65 with $568,000. On the other hand, if you start investing when you're 20 years old, investing that same $2,000 annually at the same 9.8%, you will end up at the age of 65 with 
million dollars instead. That is an almost 3x growth based on just 10 more years of investment. That is crazy, and if that's not inspiring, I don't know what is. My final point is to educate and grow. Just because your formal education's over doesn't mean your lifelong learning has to be. Um, I would definitely recommend to keep reading, keep learning, keep looking videos like this because you're gonna keep the knife sharp. Um, I've learned it only in this past year just like how to do all of this stuff. All I don't know, I didn't know anything about video production, but this is kind of just like a fun project to get me started. Um, form a book club with your friends, uh, egg each other on to kind of go out and learn new things because the world's kind of changing all around us all the time. And if you're you're not using it, you're, you're losing it. So that's my recommendation. Um, and thank you for all for watching this video. I hope you kind of got something out of it. Uh, if you have any suggestions for a follow-up video or kind of how I can improve this this process, I mean, like I said, it was this is only um, this is only based off of my experience, and let's just say I'm only six months into my my first job, so I'm not the most experienced. Um, but I just hope this can help a lot of people kind of get on their feet when it comes to finance, especially just right out of the gate, because that that time is just so important in my opinion. If you got something out of this video, uh, I definitely recommend you to subscribe and like the video and maybe share it with someone who might be struggling with this kind of thing right now because honestly, like as a Gen Z millennial, I'm not sure what generation we actually are in, um, It's the, the, there's no written rules, there's no written guide out there for people. So I just hope this could help at least one person. I would be satisfied with that. So uh, thanks all for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, keep the conversation going, and uh, thanks.